Adani Defense and Aerospace, in collaboration with the Defense Research and Development Organization, has introduced a state-of-the-art vehicle-mounted counter drone system at Aero India 2025. This cutting-edge solution enhances India's defense capabilities, reinforcing self-reliance while addressing asymmetric drone threats. By integrating indigenous technology, India further cements its position as a global leader in aerospace and defense innovation. As drones become increasingly central to modern warfare for reconnaissance and offensive operations, the need for robust countermeasures has never been more critical. This advanced system is designed to strengthen India's defense preparedness against emerging aerial threats. Mounted on a high mobility 4 in 4 vehicle, it delivers long range security, agility, and precision. Equipped with advanced sensors, the system autonomously detects, classifies, and neutralizes drones ensuring seamless protection in dynamic combat scenarios. The system is a highly mobile, self-sustaining counter-drone solution integrating multiple defense technologies into a single platform. Key features include a high-energy laser for precise drone neutralization, a 7.62mm gun for aerial threat engagement, and an array of cutting-edge systems such as radar, SIG in, electro-optical sensors, and jammers. With a 10km detection and neutralization change, it enables rapid threat identification and response, enhancing operational flexibility and battlefield effectiveness. Beyond counter-drone technology, Adani Defense and Aerospace is leveraging artificial intelligence in defense production. AI-powered algorithms are enhancing UAV operations, enabling real-time enemy intelligence and providing the Indian Armed Forces with a strategic edge in future warfare. This breakthrough underscores India's commitment to advancing indigenous defense capabilities, ensuring a stronger and more self-sufficient security infrastructure. On the left side is what we have our missiles portfolio. Today, we are one of the largest partners of DRDO when it comes to the DCPP, Development Come Production Partner module on missiles. All the way from short range 2.5 kilometers ULPGM, launched from a drone, a flying platform, going up to hypersonic Rudram 2. Adani is working day in and day out with DRDO to make this happen. There are 250 engineers of Adani who are working with DRDO on core development, core design programs in the missile domain. Along with that, what we have also showcased are the range extension kits, very important to as a capability to extend the capability of our drum bombs going up to 80 to 100 kilometers. So on the first question, I'll say our strategy has straddled across organic, uh, inorganic and co-development. And let me give you examples. Our facility in Kanpur is a pure organic greenfield facility which was done in 18 months between August 23 and March 24. For the first time in the country, an integrated ammunition complex has been established. Completely 100% Adani, no dependence on any third party. Backward integrated into bullets, cases, cups, and now we are also going into primer and propellant to ensure we don't have to import anything from outside. The second example of organic is Hyderabad. We were the first one to set up the organic capability on unmanned systems, electronic warfare, and now loitering munition. The acquisition which we did was small arms with Punch Lloyd, that is in Gwalior. When we did the acquisition, it was more a component manufacturing company and now having imbibed critical technologies of barrel, receiver, assembly, bolt carrier, it is a true system integrator of small arms. The last acquisition is Airworks because there's a de facto three to four years time in terms of taking the licenses and the potential of both civil and defense MRO is significant in the country. So it's a mixed strategy what we're doing. On the other point around R&D, one of the largest portfolios behind you is actually a R&D portfolio and a core development portfolio with DRDO. 90, 2019, thanks to the policy makers, they kick-started this program. They kick-started this program called Development Come Production Partner, that how do you create public-private partnership 
leveraging the best of the capabilities in the public and the private domain. And hence, all the missile programs which you are seeing, these are more than 250 people who are working from Adani, making things happen. Within 12 months, that ULPGM was something which was integrated by uh, Indian Army. And I'm talking about the three parts of the portfolio. Almost 25% of our portfolio is core development and innovation. Crosshair, vehicle mounted counter drone system are all examples of innovation. So, so the question is, how will satellite start playing a role in intelligence and surveillance? It's important that we should not be looking at intelligence, surveillance, reconnaissance as synonymous to drones. Absolutely not. Anything which can provide intelligence in real time to the forces, and it can come from a combination of satellites, it can come from a combination of apps platform, it can come from drones, it can come from underwater vehicles, the most important aspect are the right payloads. So the flying platforms are okay, but when we are talking about MPR, we are talking about LN, we are talking about Sky Eye, the more advanced the payloads are, any kind of uh, platform could be used. Yeah. So those collaborations will continue, Adani will keep working on them. So there are three key capabilities what I discussed, we are focused on. The first capability is everything around ISR. And intelligence, surveillance, reconnaissance is very broad. What you're seeing just behind is an underwater autonomous vehicle, all the way from aerial vehicle and also unmanned ground vehicles. And it's a network of these equipments which is going to provide you the right intelligence, even integrated with satellites in the future. The second capability is what we're calling offensive, between missiles, arms and ammunition. And the third, what we discussed just behind, is how do you bring artificial intelligence, machine learning and cyber. So it's only three of us. The three capabilities is what we're going to focus on. So it's not the time to do everything because we're not a believer of spreading ourselves too thin, but focus on key areas and go deeper. There's no challenge. See, what we're talking about is a technology domain. And if you don't keep yourself updated in terms of bringing in new innovation, when we started uh, the whole area around missiles, for example, everyone was talking strategic, intercontinental, long-range missiles. And one of the biggest innovation which came was ULPGM. How do you mount a missile on a quadcopter which can go under the radar and take out short range targets? So this is a continuous evol evolution which is going to keep happening. You need to have the team which is spread across greenfield innovation, brownfield innovation and manufacturing to make this ecosystem a sustainable ecosystem. Cyber security is something which is not only relevant to Adani but to the country as a whole. This is a domain and an expertise area which tri services, policy makers have become very cognizant of. And there are multiple cells which have been set up by Army, Navy, Air Force that how do you protect not only your own assets but also your bases. The war is now not limited to, for example, we're talking about counter ammunition. Yeah. It's not limited to that. Even my power plant, our nuclear power complex, any airport also becomes a target of cyber and things can happen which are going, going to go out of control very, very fast. So it's almost taking an India strategy on cyber and how do you start creating those bubbles of protection for these critical assets? This is going to be a combination of Recon and Warfare. This is going to be a combination of putting up a team of 1,000 people who are continuously monitoring the incoming threats which are happening through internet, IoT, XYZ. Because more we are becoming electronically savvy, the more these threats are increasing. You talk about WhatsApp, we are getting a note every day. Don't do confidential conversation, don't send anything which is uh, important on WhatsApp. So it's part of digitization.